Today we're speaking with Dr. Carlos Arteaga. He is the Donna S. Hall Chair in Breast Cancer Research at the Vanderbilt Ingram Cancer Center. He is also Professor of Medicine and Cancer Biology at Vanderbilt, American Cancer Society Clinical Research Professor, and Director of the Vanderbilt Breast Cancer Program. Thank you so much for joining us, Doctor. You're welcome. Um, could you begin by discussing some of the key translational insights that we've seen in the last year? Well, Michelle, there are several translational insights. That one that comes to mind and that I'm excited about is the development of trastuzumab DM1. It's a conjugate that has had shown remarkable activity in patients with HER2 positive breast cancer that have progressed after the standard uh, anti HER2 therapies. The response rate has been so remarkable that that anticipates that this drug would move to the to earlier in the disease, in HER2 positive disease, is going to have a major impact and increase the number of patients with this disease that we're now cured with current anti-HER2 therapies. And what kinds of studies are needed to advance translational breast cancer research? I think that uh, to advance translational breast cancer research and in doing so accelerate approval of new drugs, we're going to have to come up with probably new clinical trial designs to the ones that we traditionally use. That is, we probably are going to have to uh, test some of these new agents uh, in uh, tumors that have not been treated before the time they're operated to try to score the response of those tumors to those new drugs and try to get a signal uh, uh, in, in those tumors that show some activity and try to profile them and try to develop biomarkers of those tumors that show that response to those drugs. So we can then, when we do efficacy studies with those new agents, we can select better patients based on those biomarkers we discover using these innovative clinical trials. So I think uh, there's a realization that the traditional clinical trials process without patient selection or without patient exclusion from trials where we know these drugs are not going to work has not worked to the best the best way they should have. They've been too slow, I think, and I think we all realize we have to come up with new designs that allow us to, early in the clinical development of these drugs, develop biomarkers that allow us to select patients for the right drug. And that's actually something you're working on with Stand Up to Cancer, your dream team principal for the project targeting PI3K in women's cancers. And the project's goal is to discover approaches that will predict which patients will respond positively to PI3K inhibitors, and that will accelerate personalized cancer treatment. May I ask you how that project is going, Doctor? That project is going really well. I should highlight that that project is, involves six centers in the U.S. and one in Spain. Uh, it has not only a clinical component, but also a basic science component. Uh, and a preclinical component, uh, I think that the trial is going really well. I mean, we are lined up with uh, all the companies. Uh, I mean, all the companies that are developing pediatric kinase inhibitors are very interested in talking to us. And we are uh, just about to initiate a number of clinical trials in endometrial cancer, in ovarian cancer, and in breast cancer testing several, not all, but several of the pediatric kinase inhibitors that have completed phase one development, that is, uh, that have for which uh, compounds for which there are safety information and for which they have a good, pretty good sense of what the, what dose we should use. So I think it's going well as, uh, as we should. We have uh, teleconferences about every two weeks. Uh, and uh, we have, again, uh, protocols ready to go. We are in active discussions with the uh, companies that make these drugs. Uh, and uh, again, there's, uh, there's an enormous interest from all of us in the team to, uh, to start working as soon as we can so we can deliver within the, the time uh, of the grant. And it's a three-year time period. It is a three-year time period. We realize that uh, for what we want to do, which is a very ambitious undertaking, uh, three years is too short but we would like to, at a minimum, show as much momentum as we can in the first three years, and we're confident that we will get there. Could you comment on what the assembly process of the Stand Up to Cancer team has been like? Well, uh, again, uh, I should underscore that the three main leaders of the team where I belong are Luke Cantley, Charles Sawyers, and, and Gordon Mills. Uh, the assembly has been uh, basically uh, 
uh, first of all, the division of different teams. Well, we have one that does this with cell lines and preclinical models, one with mouse models, and one with clinical trials. Uh, and uh, again, as I said, we have basic, a very intense uh, te regular teleconference uh, series. We have constant uh, communication by email. Uh, we have I'd, we have I'd already three face-to-face -face meetings, and we have three more planned for the next year. Uh, and uh, again, uh, I'm not sure what else to say other than the assembly has been driven by our hunger and desire to get the work done. Thank you very much, Dr. Arteaga. I appreciate it. You're very welcome.